conceptualization and operationalization, two critical components in studying people. One of the funnest parts about being a sociologist is that we get to study some of the most intimate and engaging topics that are important and even personal to us in a lot of ways. We can study civic engagement. We can study what it is to be middle class. We can study uh, relationship satisfaction, religious intensity, all kinds of things that are really interesting and fascinating to explore and examine. But one of the challenges, unlike some of the other scientific disciplines, is that they're socially constructed ideas. So if you're a biologist or a physicist, often uh, it's very clear the units of measurement you have, right? It might be the number of cells or certain exact temperatures or uh, ounces or a variety of units that are already predetermined. But when you're studying something like, take for example, as I mentioned, we'll say workplace satisfaction. One, we need to have a working definition. What do we mean by workplace satisfaction? Is that you're satisfied with your pay, with your colleagues, with the tasks you have, with the, the environment and conditions you get to work in? There's a lot of different potential components. And so we conceptualize an otherwise kind of fuzzy social construct by giving it a working definition. We are going to define, for the sake of this study or this examination, workplace satisfaction as the following. And you make it a concise statement. Now, if you publish your paper or do your study, other people might... Uh, challenge your working definition, but at least you were clear. This is how I'm defining this concept. And then you take it one step further. Once you've conceptualized it or given it a working definition, we then have to figure out what is one unit of that thing? How are we actually going to measure it? This is a science. Many disciplines deal with the human experience, but we actually need to quantify things so we can analyze data on it. That's how we can detect or, or try to find patterns in social behavior. If it is something like workplace satisfaction, it could be a survey. Maybe there's a scale. They answer a Likert scale one through five on multiple questions and we average it up and give them a score. If it's Something like civic engagement, it could be particular behaviors. Did you vote in the last election? Did you vote in the you know, election before that or the primary? Did you, have you ever donated money to a campaign? Have you volunteered for a campaign? Have you posted political messages or topics on your social media? So we could have different behavioral markers. Uh, it could be observational. Uh, we, we're observing people in a natural setting. Maybe it has to do with uh, relationship satisfaction between a couple. And uh, rather than just survey them, because they might lie, that's one thing about humans is sometimes they lie to you and sometimes they lie to themselves, uh, as opposed to, say, a protein molecule. Um, but maybe we decide we, instead of uh, doing self-report data, we're actually going to observe them interact. And we're going to maybe record their faces and use uh, body language and facial expressions and count up instances of dismissiveness or leaning forward with a smile on their face. Or uh, maybe we're going to do a textual analysis of what they actually say. So they, they have a conversation and we're uh, coding for sentiment analysis, how positive or negative the tone is. Maybe we're watching playground behavior and we're, we're counting up instances of a kid hitting each other or encouraging one another. Or if it's classroom engagement, number of times they raise their hand or ask a question. There's all kinds of ways we can count and quantify things in the social world, social behavior, but it's crucial that whatever we are looking for and measuring that we're very clear up front. And so that's why conceptualization and, and operation, operationalization matter so much. One is giving the working definition, that's conceptualization, and then operationalizing it is breaking it down into measurable units, right? It sounds maybe bizarre to say, what is a unit of love, right? Or what is a unit of civic engagement? But ultimately we have to do that if we want to be able to detect patterns in it. Now, some of these things, some of these fuzzy concepts, some people might say, well, that's not even real, right? It, it's a social construct. Now, on one hand, not to get too deep theoretically on what a social construct is, but social constructs are real. They're just things not real biologically or by nature, but real because of culture. And what that means is we can study anything as long as people believe it's real. We use, sociologists use this quote, it's called the Thomas Theorem by W.I. Thomas, whatsoever people believe is real is real in its consequences. So if enough people in a certain culture group believe something is real, then it will have an impact on their thoughts and attitudes and behavior, and therefore we can conceptualize and operationalize it. Right? Take a bank run. If people, enough people believe there's going to be a stock market crash, say, we'll go with that one, and so they start selling all their shares, they can make it happen. If enough people believe that love at first sight is a real thing, then we can actually measure its impact on people. How many people have experienced that and how do we know the markers of it? It does love at first sight exist. It doesn't matter. It only matters if enough of a population believes it, then it's something we can track, right? Sociology cannot say for value-based things, right? We can't tell you if there uh, is or is not a God or if one religion is right or wrong, but we could tell you uh, if certain religious beliefs impact behavior or how religiously intense different demographics are uh, or attendance and uh, behaviors or things like that. So these are crucial tools to think through because they're what 
uh, distinguish sociology from, say, the humanities. Many people will deal with human experience uh, through literature or philosophy or music. Uh, but in sociology, we're actually trying to use a scientific method. And so we have to be very clear about our process of how we're counting, quantifying, defining things. So that way there's a kind of rigor uh, and transparency to the research that we do.